good to be back. Well, we are just sneaking into a little bit of shade here because summer is in full swing. Welcome, 2024 has arrived. Thank you all so much for your patience with me as I took that much needed break. Now that I'm back, I would love to use this first video of the year as a bit of an opportunity to reflect on all the changes that happened in 2023, including the progress, the regress, and really some things I would have liked to have done differently. Before we do that though, it was a bit of a shock coming back to the cabin after a month and in the last week or so, quite a bit of cutting has been going on. As you can see, the first example of this is the mullet. Pretty much gone. Cut number two. Oki has now officially evolved into lion status. Have a look at his new do at the back. You the king of this jungle or what? I did finally crumble and give Oki a bit of a shave job. He's getting older, he turns 13 in a couple of months. And with that, he isn't thermoregulating as well as he used to. And so this shave has just allowed him to be a bit cooler through the warmer months here in Australia. Ooh, hear me roar. I feel like an Oki update is a really good place to start because obviously he holds a very dear space in all our hearts and I know a lot of you are concerned about him as he gets older but the good news is Oki is doing so so well especially considering his age. As a lot of you remember about a year ago he started on a diet and please give Oki a little cheer on because he has now reached his ideal weight. He is just thriving. Oh you want a little belly rub too, is that right? And the last of the cutting, which was definitely the most intensive, when I got back to the property here, it was like a jungle. A lot of the grass was up to my knees and it really put the mower to the test. This grass is out of control. There is palm fronds and stuff everywhere. I think this calls for a little satisfying cleanup. It took me almost four days to get through all of the really long grass. I'll show you where it's at now. So I last mowed this four days ago. You can see it kind of already is getting to a length where it could do with the mow. Again, probably in a day or two, the grass is just growing so fast here in summer. But uh, she's looking beautiful again. Now, before we deep dive into the recap from last year, let's go head inside because really coming back to the beautiful interior of the cabin, that was what kept me sane when I came back and everything else was a bit of a mess. It is so, so nice in there and I'm just loving that interior space. A couple of days ago, I had two electricians come around and finally hook up the lights and the fans too. So she's really feeling like a real home. Loving my new outdoor lights. And then we've got this line of pendants. This one over the dining table, a DC fan here, directional lights for in the kitchen, switches. And then in the bedroom, plenty of lights, another DC fan that's gonna be over the bed. Oki also got a new tool, which I'm sure he's keen to show you. Oh, come here. What's this? His actual favorite spot is to chase it down this hallway. Get. Good boy. Uh, well, <laughs> you're not bringing it back? Oh, what happened to fetch? Hey, one of your many beds. Okay, let's talk 2023. Undeniably a huge year for me. I started it off in some of the most beautiful places in the world down on the Western Australian Southern coast with some of my best friends, but that was the end of what had been an incredible six year journey really of living in a van and always being on the move. And I was ready for change. I was ready to settle down more and find something that added a lot more stability for Oki and I, but also somewhere where we were about able to stay still and put some roots down and really get more part of the community. Of course, we've ended up here, but there was a bit of a road to get there. So after making that decision, 
I took you all to see the first property I looked at, which was on the east coast of Australia. It was boat access only. And in hindsight, it definitely wasn't right for me. I think a lot of you could see that and gave some really great advice in the comments, which actually did help sway my decision. I think I would have felt really isolated there and also come against a lot of roadblocks with building. The beauty of saying no to something that didn't feel right was I ended up on this beautiful land. And the moment I stepped foot on here, I was like, this is the most beautiful place I've ever seen. I also could just tell there was something special about it with the huge old Moreton Bay figs and other old growth, as well as the wildlife, the paddy melons, and of course this kind of quaint little cabin on there. Together, it all culminated into what had been my dream kind of building over the last few years. And I took a chance and bought the property. Yeah, we're gonna sell the grid. Steve's really happy that uh, you're the man for the property as well. So uh, I guess I'll shoot you a quick email now. I got a building inspector to look at it before I bit the bullet because I wanted to make sure the cabin was safe to live in. And of course that didn't quite pan out. The building inspector found no issues. And then once I was in here, I found more and more issues. I found that there was a lot of asbestos that would stop me being able to renovate. There was also quite a bit of termite damage that ended up leading me to have to rip the roof off. All the asbestos got ripped out and I was left with a bit of a shell of a cabin with no bathroom, no kitchen. After initially moving in, I had to kind of move out, which put me back into my van. And that's what led to me deciding to build a deck around the van. I realized if I was gonna be in there for a little while, it'd be good to increase the living space there. I needed to build the most amazing rainforest shower that I still cannot get enough of. I actually have gone from someone living in a van that didn't shower all that regularly to now someone that has a couple of showers a day and looks forward to them all the time. And also it was eventually going to become a bit of a guest house. So glad I made it. And that is also where Simon joined the picture. Simon was a subscriber that sent me a message on Instagram, said he'd love to help out. He was a landscaper. He drove seven and a half hours on his long weekend to help. And we've since become amazing mates. It was a huge year and the kind of end part of it was what caused me a fair bit of stress and anxiety was because this cabin was a lot more damaged than I realized. I had to admit to all of you, I had to start to consider the option that I might have to knock this down. And you know, whether it's really worth putting all the money and effort into saving if the damage is too far gone. Coming to that point did lead me to make the decision to do a really quick renovation on this place. In the end, I tried to tackle it in a week. As a lot of you saw, crazy. That is where we now have this beautiful space and it has come up so well that I'm less sure again about knocking it down. I honestly, I'm a bit on the fence with that and that's where it leaves me for now. Coming back to this renovated space after a month away when everything else was wild, was really such a lifesaver for me because I could come in here, relax, even though I was spending four days mowing the lawns, I had this beautiful space that I could come back to and yeah, keep, keep that sanity. Now, I do want to use this chance to talk about my highlights for last year. I would say my biggest highlight for last year was all the different friends and family that I was able to have here. To be able to host people here, even if sometimes they were just doing work, but also, yeah, being able to go overseas to and see my Canadian fam. The low points when things are going really wrong and you're, you're on your own in it, it can kind of start to feel a bit too much. And I'm so glad for the friends, family, support from you guys, also the therapy that I do, um, because I needed all of that, to be honest. I, I never want to paint this journey as all roses and all easy, because the truth is, if any of you go down the same path, or I'm sure some of you already are, you know that's bullshit. Not all rainbows and sunshine here, guys. I'm glad that I've come into the new year with a positive outlook on the place, but it is also an outlook that I feel like I'm gonna try and come into 2024 with a different approach. And that's what I wanna talk about next. But before I do, speaking of therapy, I also wanna say a quick thank you to today's video sponsor because like I said, they were a big part in me staying healthy mentally throughout last year. A huge thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. As a lot of you know, 
I started seeing my therapist through Better Help in 2021 and for me it has been such a game changer for my mental health that I kind of want to continue to talk about it for you guys because I believe therapy can benefit so, so many people. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and less intimidating for a lot of people. You simply fill out a questionnaire that'll ask you questions about your specific problems you're facing and what kind of therapist you'd like to be matched with. And then they'll match you with one of their over 30,000 therapists in their network. And the beauty of this is it's likely to give you access to a much wider range of expertise than is in your local area. Once matched with your therapist, you can then either text, phone call or video call with them, whatever is most comfortable for you. And if for some reason you just don't bond or mesh with your therapist, then you can change to a new therapist at no additional cost as many times as you want. So let's make 2024 the year. If you're ready to take the next step towards better mental health, join the over 4 million people using BetterHelp and start living a healthier, happier life today. All you need to do is click the link in my description below or head to betterhelp.com forward slash Maxinoki. That's help, H-E-L-P, and you'll get 10% off your first month of therapy. So glad I started and I guarantee you will be too. All right, Ock, it's kind of the heat of the day. What do you reckon? Should we uh, talk about goals for 2024 down at the waterhole? I think so. Yeah, but... How crazy is it that I get to live here? Little country farm boy, did not see this coming. Not bad at all. <laughs> Since finding out about this place, I've been coming here most days and partly because you can see why it's absolutely stunning, but also because I'm under strict instructions. Oki's back legs have definitely lost a bit of strength and swimming is one of the best things for him. And this water hole's perfect because he can swim between places and then get to little sandbanks, have a rest, and then just keep going. As you can see, he's on a scheduled rest break right now. What are you sniffing, bud? This is the perfect spot for Oki to escape the heat. And it's also a great time to talk about goals for 2024. My mantra this year is gonna be slow down and enjoy the process. Last year, I did some huge projects that were mainly centered around the living spaces. And because of that, I kind of neglected some of the outdoor spaces, but I've been working up a list of really fun projects to do. On top of that, I also want to head away from the property a few more times this year. Now that I've got the full drive, but also the van, it really increases my options. And I'm thinking some beach camping could be soon on the list because I've gotten back into surfing over the break. And yeah, I just can't wait to explore this area more and take you all with me. All right, Oc, what do you reckon? You ready for another lap? We'll see you back at the property. Come on, let's do it. Good boy. I feel like he's loving his swim sessions. We got work to do, buddy. All right, buddy, stop distracting me. I also mentioned that I wanted to show you some regress that happened in 2023 here on this property. And I don't know if there's much bigger evidence of that than the veggie patch. Now, this is definitely an area that I planned to get into. But once again, just focusing on the living spaces kind of took away my focus there. This year, I'd like that to change. I am gonna get this one going. And I think part of my hesitation has been 
that I'm not 100% sure that this location is where the veggie patch is going to stay. So for now, I just want to kind of get into it and start planting. Even if it ends up moving, I can learn some lessons. And a few of you have mentioned in the comments the no dig approach. I'm thinking about that one. If you've got any other ideas or what you think I should plant, please put them in the comments below. I am happy to admit that gardening is probably my least strong point in terms of any form of hands-on trade of sorts so i am so open to suggestions you're not going to patronize me but it is my big hope this year to kind of establish a bit more of a green thumb so you're hearing it now and i reckon one of the first projects is going to be diving in to see how much we can grow this year in the rainforest okay Moving on, I'm not gonna to touch on every project I've got planned because of course I've gotta leave some surprises in the bag. However, let's just glance over a few because actually it works out really well. This could be a good opportunity for you all to put in your suggestions if you have any ideas on particular projects on any of the projects I show from here on out, including the veggie patch, including the house. Ock, you meant to be coming with me, bud. Anyway, Oki's staying there. The next one is the fire pit. I would love to do a little decked out fire pit, make it a bit more comfortable. A lot of that wood's kind of rotting away. I mean, I definitely think we can do better than this. Now this secret path to my tiny house location has kind of become a fair bit more secret because I haven't maintained it. This could do with some TLC. Ah, so you are joining for this one. Come on then. And of course we always say, Hi to the glorious figures we walk past. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, a lot of you have seen this site before. I've talked about it a couple of times. This project is pretty high on my list. Building a tiny house in this spot, I am thinking kind of platforms along here. With the main house, I am kind of going through the council stuff at the moment to see what my options are. That's also the case with the shed. I have the shed kind of underways the shed project and trying to get approval for that at the moment but the result is that whilst i'm waiting for those things i feel like anything that doesn't need council approval is the stuff that i can kind of tackle sooner for those of you that aren't australian then you may not be aware but rules here are pretty strict i feel like i've already towed the line a little bit with a couple of projects last year so this year I've got to make sure i am um, do the right thing. I just find this little site here so magical and I think other people will too, eh bud? And whilst we do just sit here and take this all in, it is nice to be able to get out and about and walk around the property in this beautiful weather because the last few days it actually rained quite a lot and although that meant the inside space was even more crucial and it was all dry inside which was nice, after a bit I was just ready to get out and get into it. And it's always good to see when familiar characters return for the new season. Hey, Cooker, bud. Good to have you back. Yes, I'm coming. I'm coming. What, should we finish with the inside, buddy? All right, as I said, this is one that's just to ease us all into it and so we're all on the same page, but Let's finish with just what does need to be completed inside because as much as I want to be all outside this year, a few things need doing. So first of all, I've got two seats. We'll address that. I also want to have the kitchen more functional. There's no cooker at the moment, so I'm going out to the van anytime I need a cooktop. That's probably got to change. This wall is obviously pretty bare. I'm actually gonna get a projector because I don't want a TV in here permanently, but I do love a movie night. So any recommendations for a good projector? I made this the storage room. At this point, that's gonna stay, but I am planning on adding a bathroom in some form to the inside of the house, um, whether that be the workshop, current workshop, or the storage room just because, yeah, to save guests having to go outside. Because if this is the first video you're watching of mine, then you may not realize I have an absolute ripper outside toilet. This property and this land is shared with a few snakes. That is a python and wow. Three dead ones and one live one in the room. I believe I can fly. So I get people not really wanting to go out there at night too much. Finally, 
the office you guys have kind of already seen this i've really finessed it and made it such an organized space which i love i don't want all my videos to be purely project focused this year i want to do ones that more just show you what life is like living on the property so that might encompass tackling a few things at once and it just means that i can live a little bit more of a normal life rather than grinding out you know, till 9 p.m. mixing concrete to make sure I get it something done by a deadline. This way, stuff's still gonna get done, but you're gonna get a bit more realistic look, I think, at what day-to-day -day life would be when it's not for the algorithm. So hopefully you guys are okay with that. I wanna finish on this, on flowers. Now, you can see these beautiful flowers here. I'm gonna use this app and we'll see what these ones are. But I wanna also make this a bit of a theme of my videos. So what do we got here? These are Montbrecias, I hope I pronounced that all right. And they, by the looks of them, they're not native to Australia, but they're not a weed. It can have some antibacterial qualities. So even, even though it's not Australian, still got uses. And yeah, let me know if you're interested in learning more about the plants on the property. One of my hopes and dreams for this property going forward is that the beauty of it can eventually be shared. I'd love to, like you saw with the tiny home, have people be able to stay on here. And I just think it would be so cool if when you came and stayed here, I had a little book of all photos I'd taken myself where I'd identified different plants and animals that live here. And then that way, if you're staying here for a couple of nights, you can go on one of the surrounding bushwalks that I'll have made by then, and you can try and identify those species for yourself, take it with you, tick what you find, a bit of like a bingo card. Let me know if you'd like to stay in a place like that. Thank you so, so much for watching this one. Honestly, I actually found it a bit hard to pick back up the camera after so long away. So I felt like I kind of needed a video like this just to get me back in the swing of it. And even from starting to film this morning, I feel a lot more like myself. And yeah, hopefully you kind of like that myself because I'd like you to keep watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. If not for me, come back for Oki, guys. Come on. How can you resist that face? Hmm? How can you resist that face? In the meantime, be kind to yourself, be kind to one another. Keep living your life. Oh, here you go. <laughs> You're still bloody strong. Get. Good boy.